what's up everybody happy sunday hope all you're having a great day so far um we are back saints and sinners season six episode two the truth won't set you free i enjoyed the hell out of this episode let me tell you i enjoy every episode to be honest with you because every episode never disappoints me you know what i mean it's like bat to bat bangers every episode is always good so definitely shout out to the cast, the crew, the production team, the writers. Shout out to all y'all because y'all keep coming out with these bangers every Sunday. And I truly enjoy it. Um, And again, I'm going to be it's, – it's bittersweet, man, because it's, it's really sad to see this show go. Like I really feel like this show can go on at least another four, maybe five seasons. Maybe even more. Like this show is just that damn good. Um. But yeah, getting into this episode, Jabari was pissing me off this entire episode. I wanted to slap the holy grail out of him. The way he was treating Paige this whole episode really irked my soul. Like, I did not like the way he was treating her. Like, he's really mad about this baby situation with Angela. And according to him, it's not really even about Angela. It's about the child, the potential child. Um... That's what he's pissed off at her about. At the end of the day, Jabari acts like he doesn't know the woman that he married. Like, dude, she's street. This is how she handles her business. The streets. This is what she does. This is what she knows. She takes it to the street. Why is he acting so brand new? I understand that he's trying to get out the street life and move into the corporate world. And she was all for that. But sometimes, you know, handling things in a corporate way ain't the way to go all the time when you come from the street. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to go back to what you know. That's the only way people respond. Um, But he just really acts like he doesn't know the type of woman he married. And it was really irritating my soul. I'm like, Jabari, you're mad at her for handling a situation that you created. You messed this up. You let that scheming ass woman into your life and your daughter's life into your bed. And look what it did. It cost y'all a lot. You know, Angela was the worst of the worst. I love the actress, by the way, who played Angela because she played the hell out of the role. Um, she convinced me not to like her ass. <laughs> That's how you know you good. Like, if you could come on. And let me tell you something. It's not that I didn't like the character of Angela because I, I, it was a love-hate relationship. It was. I loved that character and I hated it at the same time. <laughs> her little scheme itself. Um, but yeah, Jabari was just acting simple. Like, dude, I understand he was upset that she called Ray Ray of all people, and I do agree with him on that one. I feel like that's going to come back and bite her for calling Ray Ray, but I feel like the reason she did it was because, you know, desperate times calls for desperate measures. She was desperate. She had to get rid of Angela some way, and the only way she really knew how, and to keep her hands clean of not touching her, was to call Ray Ray. That was the only way for her at that time. What, you know, how can you be mad at it? Um, but he's sitting there trying to tell Paige, oh, you slipping if you think, oh, Ray Ray's on the up and up or you could trust him or whatever, you losing your edge. I'm like, excuse me? If anybody in that relationship has lost their edge, it's Mr. Jabari. Like, Jabari's supposed to be street and hood. Like, how you let Angela get that far into your life baffles me. I'm like, bruh, he knew from season one her ass was a schemer, and he still allowed himself to fall for her, knowing that she moves where the wind blows her. If you piss her off, she's going to get back at you. She did the same thing to Levi when Levi pissed her off. That's what Angela does, so I'm surprised that Jabari even fell for that con. If anybody is slipping and losing her edge, it's been him for quite some time. It's been Paige who's been saving his ass time and time again. Remember when Levi sold the church out from under him and took the money? It was Paige who had the balls to grab her gun and go handle the situation. Angela came in wrecking shit, claiming to be pregnant. It was Paige who saved his ass yet again. I mean, can you... I, I agree with Ray Ray. Ray Ray did him a huge favor by getting rid of Angela. I'm not even gonna lie because... We all know if Angela was still around now claiming to be pregnant, she would have made Jabari life a living hell. She even had the boy arrested. Paige did what she had to do. He should be happy 
that he got a loyal ass wife who's 10 toes down with him. That's what he should be happy about. Because any other dude would have been proud that they woman got their back like that. You know what I'm saying? Like she watches his back and his front. That's what you want. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is he mad about, dog? I was so pissed at Jabari. I'm like, dude, I understand he feel like, well, there was a child involved. That's different. But like Rex pointed out to him, you don't even know if she really was pregnant. It was coincidental how she got knocked up right around the time when you was kicking her to the damn curb. Now, all of a sudden, she want to be knocked up. Like, come on. The timing was way too coincidental. Like, Jabari don't think sometimes. <laughs> like, dude, be happy that your wife got your back. Like, you know what I mean? And my thing is, he he's so foolish and now he wants to pack his bags and leave. My thought process was, Paige, let him go. You done had this man back forever. Let him go. If he don't see the value that he has in his wife, let him go. Let him pack his little duffel and let him go sleep on somebody's couch. Go do what he do. Um, he'll be back when he re when he comes to his senses. Um and Jabari so hung up on this little baby situation with Angela, it's like his wife, he's neglecting his wife and her mental health. Like his wife went through hell. I felt bad for Paige when she was in that interview and Ella was basically interrogating her. Well, not interrogating her, but, you know, asking her these questions for her testimony and all that stuff about Dr. Ross. Um, I love how she played it. She was like, you know, no comment. No, you know, I'm not going to answer, you know. She was like, oh, I don't recall. Every question Ella asked her, I don't recall. But I felt bad for her in that moment when she broke down. And she talked about everything Dr. Ross did. Like, he did all these little guinea pig type experiments on her. He even took some of her eggs. Like, he did all this stuff to her. And she never really dealt with it. You know what I'm saying? When she came home, she never really had a chance to deal with that. You know, by going to a therapist or even talking to Jabari in depth about it because she had to deal with the Angela mess. You know what I mean? And Jabari totally ignores this stuff. Like your wife needs help. And it's like you're not even there to support her, but she's been there for him even during her darkest hour. Honestly, I hope Jabari and Paige could work this out. But until he come to his senses that his wife was actually looking out for their family, then he need to go on about his business but i can understand jabari's jealousy though that's that's partly why he's upset too because she called ray ray because he's he's insecure where ray ray is concerned and i can't say i blame him ray ray was pretty much Paige's first everything you know what i'm saying like that man taught her the game you know what i'm saying like he taught her the street life he taught her the game you know that's why Paige is how she is she's ruthless and she gets all of that from Ray Ray, she was prepackaged when she met Jabari. And Jabari, I think a part of him can't stand that. You know what I'm saying? Because anything she know, her ride or die shit, all of that, she got from another dude and not him. You know what I'm saying? But the fact is, everything she got from this dude has benefited Jabari over these years. You know what I'm saying? And that's what he needs to remember. Like, stop being so hung up on Ray Ray. Um, I love the scene, though, with her and Christy. I love that little friendship her and Christy got. You know what I mean? I love how Christy, you know, was turning her life around before this whole organ ring mess. Um, but, you know, their friendship was nice, you know, sipping wine and stuff. And she actually has somebody there that she could talk to and vent to, you know, and that's that's dope. Because I feel like a lot of people need that when they're going through something like you need somebody that you could talk to and vent to, you know. And, of course, she also wanted Christy to run some tests on her um, because she wants to have another baby at some point. Um, but she knew Dr. Ross took her eggs and stuff. So she wanted Christy to run some tests and Christy ran the test. And apparently, I guess, chances of her having another baby are pretty much slim to none. Um, it ain't going to happen. And I just saw the pain all over Paige's face when she found that shit out. Um she was hoping that there was something that they could do or, you know, something that can be done, you know, a procedure, something that can, you know, fix that problem. But it don't look like there is. My thing is, if I was Paige, I'd be trying to get in touch with Dr. Ross. Like, I'd be talking to Ella to see if I could have a conversation with him, a one-on-one -on -one meeting or something. 
um, to find out what he did with them eggs. Like, where where did he put them? You know what I'm saying? See if you can get those back and have them, you know, put back into your body. That's what I would be doing. Um, I was so tight, though, when Ray Ray came over there. Because Ray Ray is not just trying to come back, to, you know, come into Cyprus and take over. He want Paige back. Because, you know, he keep calling her queen and stuff like that. He want her back. Um, and then they started kissing and stuff. I said, no, Paige, no. <laughs> Don't fall for him. Listen, Ray Ray is a hot mess. That man was making his rounds in Cyprus. Like, he is doing his damnedest to take over that town. And it's so funny because he keep trying to talk shit to Rex, like calling him old man and, oh, I respect my elders. Dude, don't don't go there. I hate when young people come in somewhere and try to talk down to somebody older and try to talk shit about their age or whatever. Fool, do you do not realize age comes, you know, with age comes wisdom. Ray Ray is smart. I give him that. He's a smart dude, but I feel like he's overly cocky. You know what I'm saying? He think he got this in the bag. Like he could take Rex down just like that. It ain't going to be that easy, playboy. I got to steal Rex's line real quick and say playboy. It ain't going to be that easy. Rex has not lasted this long in the streets by being stupid. Rex is very smart. And I feel like Ray Ray is underestimating Rex because of his age or whatever. I'm like, bro, you playing a dangerous game right now. If you underestimate an OG, how you think he lived long enough to be an OG? Please, you is not the, the first young dude to come into a town and try to take over. Rex has dealt with this shit for years. But I do, you know, it's funny because Rex did mention to Josie, he was like, something is different about Ray Ray. Out of all the young dudes that ever came into that town trying to call themselves taking over, it's something different about him. He said he don't know what it is, but it's a screw loose for him because even old man Marshall told him that. The dude up in the jail that was talking to Jabari about his father, he even told him that. He was like, yeah, something is a screw loose with him. And there is, you could tell, like he's a different breed than any other young dude Rex has dealt with. So Rex got to tread a little carefully because, you know, Ray Ray was pretty much threatening Ella. He was threatening um, Kendrick. Like he was threatening everybody around Rex that Rex is close with, you know. Um, But, you know, Rex. He ain't sweating it. You know, I'm pretty sure he know how dangerous Ray Ray is, but he ain't sweating Ray Ray. And Ray Ray, of course, was trying to buy Josie's club and all that, her bar. Um, Josie need the money. She need the money bad. But her attorney would pretty much was telling her, like, even if she sold her house, the bar, it's still not enough to take care of, you know, Miles for an extended period of time. You know what I mean? Like, he's been in this coma now for five months. And there's no telling how long he's going to be in that coma. You know what I mean? It's going to be hard to continue to pay for his medical treatments and stuff like that, because even if she sold the bar, the house, it would only cover maybe six months, seven months of treatment. And then she'll be flat broke. She'll run out of that money quick. Um, Tam is better off. You know, she has the most money to take care of him. Plus, with her health plan and stuff like that, she could take care of him for quite some time, you know. Um. But Josie wasn't going to take that line down. You know, Josie a hustler. She's going to do whatever she got to. And I respect that about Josie. It was so funny, though, because when she was talking to Rex, she got a little cockiness about her, a little boldness about her in this episode. Like, the episode before, she was shaking like a stripper. And now, you know, when she got that gun in her hand, she was, you know, shaking like a hoe in church. But in this episode, Rex was like, you know, I'm, he said, basically, you're going to be my call girl. He was like, when I need you, I'm going to need you to drop whatever you're doing at the drop of a dime and come handle some business with me. And she was acting like, oh, I'm cool with that. I could do that. I could. Where the hell was this on yesterday's episode? Because you was doing all this like, you know, like you got the tremors, like you got the shakes. And now all of a sudden you big, bad and bold. I said, OK. All right. I don't know where you got this confidence from, but you better keep it because Rex ain't the one to play with. Because <laughs> you mess up with him. you Listen, you better go into deep hiding. Because Rex basically want to use her to get at Ray Ray. Because since Ray Ray took a liking to Josie, he was like, I'm going to use that shit to my advantage to get to him. You know, keep negotiating with him, you know, keep him, keep him, you know, around. So that way I can get the drop on his ass. So, you know, he handed her a whole band full of money and stuff. I said, OK, OG, Rex be walking around with the bands on him and shit. I said, all right, Rex. Um, I ain't mad at you, player. 
Um, so anyway, Jabari, of course, went to go talk to Rex about all his issues and stuff. And, you know, Rex was giving him game and stuff like that. And then, of course, when Jabari mentioned um, Marshall to him, of course, Rex tried to play it off like he didn't know who he was talking about. Oh, I don't know no Marshall. I don't know this one. I don't know that one. I don't know who that is. I don't remember him. And then in the very next scene, we see him going to talk to Marshall. I said, mm -hmm. I knew you knew his ass. Because Rex don't want Jabari fishing around about the past. Because we all know Rex has something to do with Jabari's father getting killed. But he trying to paint it as if Jabari's father took a bullet for him. But if memory serves, I believe Kendrick was the one who pointed out that Rex was the one that had Jabari's father killed. Or he killed him himself. So, of course, he don't want that little bit of information coming out. Um, Because when Jabari kept looking into it and stuff, Rex was getting pissed. Telling him, listen, leave the past in the past. Leave it alone. Like, you're digging up shit because of your issues with Paige. Leave it alone. You know, he was trying to gaslight him into letting this go. And it looked like it's working for the moment. Um, So he went to go talk to Marshall because he was pissed that Marshall would go back on his word and start speaking about it. Marshall told him, oh, I think he deserved no. No, you don't think he deserved to no. know. Ray Ray is the one who put that in Marshall's head. Kept telling Marshall, oh, tell him this and stir up this kind of drama. Yeah, Ray Ray done paid him off, basically, because he told him, oh, I'm going to take care of your family. Um, Marshall's stupid, because he know good and well. Once you cross Rex one good time, Rex is coming for your ass. And Rex ain't going to forget. Oh, Rex going to get you. He going to get you. That's what he going to do to your dumb ass. Because now we see somebody up in the jail, up in the prison cell, hung, look like they were hanged. And I'm guessing that was old man Marshall. I'm like, Rex ain't going to let that go. And if Ray Ray find out that Marshall didn't stick to the script, Ray Ray might have had him killed. But we all knew Marshall wasn't long for this world, his old tale. That's what he get for trying to play uh, both sides of the fence. Should have minded your old business and kept that trap shut. Now you getting too mouthy and now look at you. Dropping dead. Um, <laughs> that's exactly what his old tale get. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, Ella was in for the shock of her life today. Um, when she was, you know, when Tony was sitting there interviewing Christy and stuff like that, Christy sitting there crying and all that because she was recounting what happened when she found out Paige was alive. Christy sitting there doing all this crying and stuff, and I'm looking, I'm like, I ain't see no tears. <laughs> she just <laughs> yeah, she stabbed him and she I ain't seen not one teardrop. <laughs> I said, Christy, you can't cry on cue. Like she was just sitting there, do not people do what they fake crying. They be like <laughs> wiping away pretend tears. She wasn't there. I ain't seen not one tear shed. I'm like, where the tears at? I ain't seen nothing drop down <laughs> at all. And Ella, and when Ella was interviewing um Paige, she knew to to shut that that interview down quick. When Paige was talking about how she got ran over and stuff, and oh she ain't forget that though, she recall that. Ella said, "Yeah, I don't have any further questions. I bet your ass don't." Ella was smart to shut that down because she knew if they really got into it and dug deep, she knew that that little tidbit of information was gonna come out um about how. Ella got homeboy to um, run over Jabari, but it was Paige who got hit. She ain't want that coming out. I said, mm-hmm, better shut that down, Ella, man. Better be quiet. <laughs> she shut it down fast. So then they started talking to Dr. Ross and stuff, trying to get him to flip on his boss because they need names about who he was working with. And, of course, at first he wasn't about to talk, but Ella got, you know, Tony and the rest of the people to leave the room and turn off the cameras. And Ella was like... So it's just you and I, no cameras. I'll tell me what I want to know. He's still acting like he don't want to talk. So she pull out a syringe, this little needle or whatever that apparently he used to castrate people. And he wanted to talk now because, he know, that syringe is definitely that syringe plus Paige's testimony against him. He was going to prison for a mighty long time, probably life. He knew it. So, of course, now to cut a deal, he going to want to talk. So he told her, oh, I'm going to give you more than one name. I'm going to give you three. He said Ray Ray. So I said, wait, Ray Ray? The Ray Ray? Ray Ray was a part of this? I'm like, oh. So Ray Ray was a part of this. I wonder how Paige is going to feel when she finds out about that. Because she can't even have no more kids and Ray Ray was a part of that. Like, how much do Ray Ray know about her being alive and being in that center? 
interesting. And then he said Christy and Leona. That's when she stopped writing. She was like, what? She said, nah, you bullshit. He said, nah, I ain't lying. He said, go ask. And, of course, she didn't tell Tony about all this information because, of course, she needed to find out from Leona what the hell going on before she bring it to the DA because she's not going to be able to hold that information for long, especially if Dr. Ross talked to Tony himself. So you only got a small window of opportunity to keep this to yourself for the time being until you get more info. So, of course, she went to Leona about it, and Leona was, like, trying to play it off at first, but then she was like, all right, fine. You know, she copped to it. And, of course, Ella was pissed because she got Christy involved in this. But according to Leona, the only reason she got involved in this was because she dying. I love me some Lady Bird. Yeah, I know I do. I love Leona, but uh -uh. uh-uh. I'm not buying that right now. I don't know. I'm just not buying it that she dying. Because she seemed very casual about it. (laughs) I'm dying. And then going to sit down and keep looking at her food. I'm like, ma'am, if you dying, you you sure you sure don't seem broken up about it. <laughs> like you acting all casual, nonchalant about the shit. I'm like, I would be in tears or something. I'm like, you know, a little shooken up about it. But I'm like, I, I don't know. Maybe she feel like cause she old or whatever. <laughs> she feel like it's inevitable. But I'm like, nah, uh, uh-uh. uh. Something tell me it's more than you dying. I feel like that's just a cover story. Because she was definitely worried about Ella finding out about the operation and all that stuff. Like, why, if you dying, why are you so worried about Ella finding out? Why are you so scared? Because you know you're going to go to prison. But dying people don't care about going to prison because you're about to be dead anyway. By the time a trial come around, you'll be gone. You'll be a ghost. I don't, I don't buy her little story. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, um, Kendrick was trying to get Anna, a.k.a. Stacia 2.0, her twin sister, out this stripper game. Or whatever, because he was like, he felt like Stacia, if Stacia knew about her, Stacia wouldn't want her to be no stripper. She'd try to help her or whatever. And of course, you know, she kind of chewed his head off about it because she don't want to take nobody's handouts and she don't trust nice people, basically. Um, I don't trust her. I, I want to trust her, but I don't trust her intentions so far. I don't know. She could be on the up and up, but then again, she couldn't because I don't know. You know how people be fraudulent nowadays. Um... They be having their own reasons for doing things and stuff, so I don't know. We gonna have to see about that one. But she did say that she wanted to get to know Stacia and stuff like that, and you know he was all happy to tell her all about her or whatever. I don't trust it. So far, I don't trust it because some people come into your life pranking like they want to get to know their sibling or they want to get to know this person, but really they got a hidden agenda. I hope she don't, but you just never know with people. You know what I mean? So hopefully Kendra keeps both eyes open. But I got a feeling if she isn't up and up, he probably going to, you know, take a romantic interest in her. And they probably going to start dating and stuff like that. But anyway, this was a dope episode. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. And I will see you all later. Have a great night. Peace.